During my early days in the hobby, it was JWK that was the darling switch manufacturer because of their buttery, smooth offerings. I've tried a few JWK switches and there are some standouts like the super cheap but super nice JWK Blacks, but for the most part, I've not been all that impressed. Gateron has been a mainstay in the hobby since before I was even in it, but they never really stood out until recently when they upgraded their housing design and factory lubing. All of their newest switches seem to be sporting these upgrades and all of the ones I've tried have been awesome, from the cheap pro line to the high-end ink switches. Today we're comparing the Gateron Milky Yellow Pros, henceforth just the yellows, with the Gateron Box Black Inks, henceforth just the box inks. The former comes in at around 24 US cents per switch, and the latter is around 3.5 times more expensive at around 85 cents per switch. The question we're seeking to answer is, do you really get more than three and a half times the value out of the box inks than the yellows? Let's find out. Before we continue, let me tell you about this video's sponsor, PCBWay. PCBWay is your one-stop destination for all things printed circuit boards. With over a decade of experience in the field, you can rest assured that your project is in good hands. Head on over to PCBWay.com to register for a new account and get a $5 welcome coupon. And when you're ready to get started, get an instant quote from a PCBWay sales representative and be on your way to turning your dream project into reality. Big thanks to PCBWay for sponsoring this video. According to Switches.mx, Gateron's milky housings are composed of a mix between polycarbonate and nylon. For the ink housings, the material composition is proprietary and unknown. Both the yellows and box inks have palm stems, but the box inks utilize this dust-proof design. The box inks also have a shorter travel, causing the stem to peak slightly out of the top housing at bottom out. From my testing, this does not fully alleviate interference with Cherry Profiles Row 3, the shortest row. Gateron yellows are known for having a long spring, but when I compared the spring from the yellow with the spring from a Gateron Pro Red, I found that the two were the exact same length at 15 millimeters, and the box ink has an even longer spring at around 19 millimeters. Switches.mx has the yellow's bottom out weight at 63.5 grams and the box inks at 70 grams. One of the great things about Gateron's updated switches is their stock performance. I've used both the yellows and box inks completely stock for extended periods of time and have been pretty satisfied with both. If you're not super picky, I would say you absolutely could use them without lubing at all. I did find, however, that they do start to develop some unpleasant sharp noises after some time under use. I suspect that this is due to the factory lubing leaking out of the housings. I noticed my hands getting luby whenever I would remove or mount these switches. The following sound tests were done with the switches having already gone through quite a bit of use. For all of the comparisons in this video, we'll be using the R1 KBD67 Lite completely stock, no mods with GMK laser. The two switches actually sound pretty similar. The box inks are just a tad bit louder, sharper, maybe higher pitched. There's something about it that's just a little bit harsher in sound, which is kind of surprising to me as the OG ink to me is a deep, talky, and muted switch. Next, let's see how these switches fare when lubed. I did the Gazoo method of switch lubing on both. You can check out this video by June Keebs for an in-depth tutorial on this method, but basically it involves just dolloping a glob of lube onto each of the bottom housing rails and donut dipping the spring. This is a much faster lubing method than something like Teja's method, which is very precise and covers a lot more parts of the switch. This is the method that I previously employed on all of my switches, and it got to the point where I just didn't want to lube switches anymore because it just took so long. I've tried the Gazoo method on Boba U40s as well as Aqua Radiant Reds, and I have been very satisfied with both the resulting switch sound and smoothness as well as the time it took to do it. I'm planning on making a video about alternatives for people who hate lubing, and I'll have the Gazoo method featured in deeper depth there. Make sure you're subscribed if you'd like to see that video. I will also not be filming these switches. I have stopped even thinking about films and it hasn't 
hasn't really had any effect on my experience with any switches. Of course, this is just me and you may be more sensitive and find the need for a more in-depth lubing method and or films. But I would urge you to at least consider that maybe you don't need to be spending all of this extra time and money. It's also worth noting that different switches may require more in-depth lubing and or films, especially if they're awful and unusable stock, unlike the two switches we're looking at here. Once lubed, both switches get quieter and lower pitched. The unpleasant characteristics like sharpness and harshness also disappear for both switches. Based on this head-to-head -head comparison, the lubing has been nothing but beneficial. However, my IRL impression is that the lubing has muted both switches a little bit too much. I'm craving a smidge more volume, but not as much as the stock switches had. Somewhere in between would be nice, which I probably could have achieved by using some thinner lube. I've used Crytox 205 Grade Zero on all of the switches I've tried so far in my career because it's just kind of the default. It's what everyone says you should use. I really should look into some thinner lube for future switches. Comparing the two lube switches to each other, I found the yellows to be just a tad bit higher pitched, which is strange because the opposite seemed to be true of their stock versions. The difference is not that big though. Next, let's compare these two switches with a couple of other Gateron switches. First, the Gateron Pro Reds that I lubed with the Teha method. And second, the Gateron Oil Kings which are completely stock but already used as daily drivers for a couple of weeks. These Oil Kings should also figure pretty prominently in that future lube alternatives video. Both the lubed Pro Reds and stock Oil Kings are louder and sharper sounding than both the yellows and box inks. The Oil Kings seem to be the loudest of the bunch. The Pro Reds, despite being lubed with a more in-depth method, still have a thinness to them that is probably due to their pure polycarbonate top housings. In terms of smoothness, I couldn't really perceive a difference between the two switches. Both are very smooth even before lubing. In terms of sound, there is a small difference between the two, but I struggle to pinpoint what that difference is exactly, with it changing before and after lubing, and also even between different listens to the comparisons. I would say it's a negligible difference though. Both switches sound great just a tad bit too muted after lubing, like I mentioned earlier. The box inks have some features that the yellows do not. They've got that heavier, long spring, reduced travel, and the stem peak for easing north-facing interference. The stem peak does help improve north-facing sound a lot, even if it doesn't completely eliminate it on row 3. Whether or not these features are worth the 3.5 times price difference is up to you. Personally, they're not that important to me, and so I'm giving the win to the cheaper switch, the Gateron Milky Yellow Pro. The cheaper switch is now 2 for 2 in these cheap versus expensive videos of mine, as the Jaywick Blacks won out over the Duroc Lavenders in the last one. And that concludes this head-to-head -head battle between the Gateron Milky Yellow Pros and Gateron Box Black Inks. What did you think of the results? Agree? Disagree? Have you tried these two switches? How has your experience been? Have any suggestions for a future cheap versus expensive comparison? Let us know in the comments. And if you found this video helpful, informative, entertaining, or any other positive adjective, please consider giving it a like and sharing it with a friend who might like it as well. And for more enthusiast keyboard reviews, comparisons, analysis, and modding journeys, make sure you're subscribed to the channel and have notifications turned on. Thank you so much for watching.